Okay, so uh, we have this. Uh, okay, this topic today about uh, Paul TDDFT. So why yet another TDDFT scheme? So TDDFT now is a quite uh, major technique. So uh, there are many implementations in many code. However, what uh, um, I mean, the reason that started us to uh, develop a totally new method is uh, uh, the application that we started to do of the DDFT to large metal uh, nanoclusters. I mean, uh, up to 1000 atoms, which are the application that we are currently doing. So uh, the most important uh, reason that uh, drove us to, to this new method is the efficiency. Since uh, in quantum chemistry, most, uh, the most uh, common method is the Casida scheme. And uh, this, uh, we want to avoid the Davidson diagonalization. Why? Because uh, as uh, you probably know, the Davidson diagonalization is really very efficient only if you request uh, not so many excited states. However, when you have metal nanoclusters uh, and you want to cover, for example, the typical range of optical absorption, say five electron volts, you need many, many excited states, more than 1000. And that in that regime, the Davidson diagonalization is not working very well. I mean, it is not uh, the, the typical application. So this was the uh, main uh, uh, reason that uh, started us to do this. Then uh, actually, the good, uh, uh, I think, uh, the, the, another good quality of the point DDFT method is that uh, this method is, uh, can uh, do also the analysis of the excited states, very similar to the Casida scheme. So, because you know that there are other approaches of the DDFT, for example, in real time, which are very efficient, but uh, are not able to extract uh, the information that usually the chemist uh, want to know. For example, the uh, assignment of the excited states in terms of uh, uh, excited configurations and the molecular orbital nature that, of course, uh, has a lot of chemical information. So this was the most important topic. Then I will also uh, tell you something about uh, another accuracy efficiency topic, which is the so-called hybrid diagonal approximation that we implemented a few years ago in ADF. Uh, this uh, allows to use hybrid functionals like B3LIP in a TDDFT with uh, very good efficiency, because as you know, in this hybrid functional, there is the non-local uh, Fock exchange, which is uh, very uh, expensive from the um, computational point of view especially for ADF, which is usually Slater type function. For Gaussian, it is a little better, but uh, it is already rather uh, heavy. So with this uh, approximation, we are able to make this calculation much, much more efficient. And also without losing too much accuracy. That's very important. Then third point, uh, as you will see, our method for TDDFT needs a special basis set for fitting the density, the induced density, so not the standard density. So uh, we optimized the, the, this uh, new fitting for Polity DDFT application. And this was, uh, I think, a very useful uh, target because uh, in this way we have been, we will be able to apply this method to all, almost all the periodic tables. Then we will go through some example, for example, validation, comparison with the experiment, which is, of course, very important to have an idea of the accuracy that uh, we can reach with this method. And also selected applications in uh, large systems, for example, nanoplasmonics. And finally, I will show you some example explanation of the input, which maybe is very important uh, from the user point of view. Okay, this is just an example of the why Casida is not uh, very efficient for large systems. When, uh, okay, this is the typical Casida equation for TDDFT. You have to diagonalize this omega matrix. 
But uh, the problem is that the omega matrix, the dimension is the product between the, sorry, the uh, occupied and virtual orbital. So this uh, dimension can be very large. For example, for this uh, gold 172 cluster, if you take a, a triple Z uh, polarized uh, basis set, you have uh, more than 1,000 occupy orbitals, almost 4,000 virtual. So you have this huge number of the dimension of the matrix. You know that, uh, of course, ADF does not store this matrix, but nevertheless, the dimension of this uh, uh, problem is quite large. And the problem is that if you try to extract uh, many roots uh, from this, uh, so many eigenvalues, you are not able to go beyond a certain energy point because otherwise uh, it becomes uh, very, very heavy from the computational point of view, you see? So for practical point of view, usually if the system is very large, you are forced to cut uh, here the spectrum because uh, it is uh, impossible to go beyond this point. If you try to extract more eigenvalues, you can have problems, for example, of numerical accuracy because the algorithm is not stable, or actually you need many, many states to cover this region, and actually it is not practical at all. So this is the practical problem with Kazi. Okay, I will go very quick with the theory because uh, I think we can discuss in any case uh, after the talk if uh, someone is interested, but uh, this is just to recall you in linear response theory, you can obtain the induced density from an external time-dependent uh, uh, oscillating field with this expression. With this, uh, he is the dielectric susceptibility, not easy to calculate for an interacting system. But uh, we have uh, what the uh, time-dependent EFT theory uh, tells is that we can obtain the same density of the uh, interacting electron system with uh, these fixtures system description, the consham, uh, the dielectric susceptibility of the non-interacting system, and we know how to calculate rather easily this object, provided we substitute the external potential with this uh, so-called SCF potential, which is the sum of the external, which will be, for example, the oscillating electric field of light with the response of the Coulomb part of the Hartree part and of the response of the exchange correlation part. So you see, this is just, for example, the Coulomb field generated by the induced density. Okay, so you can use also this to uh, obtain the induced density. These are linear equations, so you can couple this and solve this equation with respect to the induced density. So this is the equation that you obtain. So this is quite uh, equivalent to the Kazid approach. What you obtain is the induced density. Uh, this uh, equation is very appealing because if you uh, are interested in this object, uh, you can uh, expand in basis set the induced density. So you use, for example, this fitting set of uh, fitting functions to uh, represent the induced density. In this case, you see that uh, this, uh, the dimension of this equation will be very small because, for example, for the same system as before that we have seen that the Casida matrix has 6 million dimension, here this, uh, uh, dim the dimension of this matrix will be only 6,000. So you see it is much, much smaller. Of course, the problem is that we have to represent all these objects uh, using the basis set of the auxiliary density fitting basis function. Okay, so all the theory is uh, rather well explained in this paper, so you can find all the details. Uh, at the end, once we have obtained the induced density, you, it is possible to obtain the polarizability, and after the polarizability, it is possible to extract the imaginary part of the dynamical polarizability, and this will be just the absorption spectrum. And you see that the difference with respect uh, to Kazida is that uh, in this case, we do not obtain the spectrum directly, but we have to calculate the spectrum point by point. We have uh, to calculate each photon energy 
for each photon energy, we obtain the absorption and we scan all this photon energy in the range of our interest. Uh, actually, in our method, we uh, uh, add we, uh, with the photon energy also with a small imaginary part in the photon energy, which corresponds to a Lorentzian broadening of the excited spectrum. So at the end, when once we have uh, obtained, uh, we have this uh, basis set for the density, we can represent this equation using this basis set, and this equation is uh, cast in uh, a in this uh, uh, system of equation, which is a linear system of uh, equations, and uh, this is non-homogeneous linear system of equation, but the di a dimension of the system is rather small. And actually, we have a very efficient technique to solve this equation, for example, with the scala pack uh, routines to do this in parallel. Uh, the, uh, the other problem is that, of course, we have to represent the Kohn-Sham susceptibility in uh, our basis set. You, you know, this is not trivial because you have a double sum on all the occupied and virtual states, so you have uh, this uh, expression, actually all the ingredients are available because here you have just uh, the Kohn-Sham eigenvalues and uh, orbitals. However, you have this uh, sum, which in principle is uh, infinite. However, a very efficient trick is to recast this double sum, not uh, as uh, occupied and virtual separate sum, but uh, we just uh, use uh, a, an axis of excitation energies, and then we uh, split, uh, we resum this double sum with uh, this sum on the excitation energy, and then within all the intervals that we can discretize this uh, excitation energy, we have many uh, orbital difference which uh, are which have the same uh, difference. So in this case, what we can do if we discretize uh, this uh, excitation energies axis, these uh, terms that represent uh, this, uh, uh, orbit, these uh, orbitals are energy independent. So at the end, we can build very efficiently this uh, object as uh, a linear combination of matrices, which are very small, and only the coefficients are uh, photon energy dependent. You see, in this way, we can calculate this object for each point of our spectrum. Of course, this uh, axis can go to infinite in the excitation energy. However, uh, we can use a cutoff, which is a very physical, because you know that uh, if you calculate uh, the spectrum at a certain point, of course, you have a mixing of excited configuration, but you don't expect uh, strong contributions for very high in energy contribution, so you can use a cutoff. Uh, this actually is a very crucial input choice for Polity DDFT. I will give you some uh, um, uh, hints at the end how to uh, choice this uh, in a very accurate way. Consider that, uh, for example, uh, you have uh, this, um, you, you of course can go very high in energy, but in that case you can put too many, and this, of course, you have uh, an accumulation of errors, or if you use a too low cutoff, you can exclude important contributions. So this is a very important choice for the accuracy of the calculation. Okay, so at the end, uh, this, this uh, matrix can be built and calculated, and uh, all the spectrum can be extracted. Okay, and this is just, uh, was just uh, a, a I mean, a, an abstract of the um, Polt DDFT method. Then, regarding the hybrid diagonal approximation that we have to we have implemented recently, uh, this is the paper. Uh, use if it is maybe easier to see this approximation if we start with the the random phase approximation version of the DDFT. If you look at this uh, matrix. Uh, uh, in presence of uh, hybrid uh, functionals, uh, you have uh, this uh, 
uh, exchange integrals. Alpha is the quantity of non -lo local uh, Hartree Fock exchange, which are very, very uh, demanding to be calculated uh, with non Gaussian basis set. So, uh, in actually, the role of this is very important uh, on the diagonal of this matrix. Why? Because uh, the most important role of these integrals is to reshift, if you want, the virtual, uh, the energy of the virtual orbitals, which is uh, pushed up a lot by the non-local Fock exchange. So, with this in mind, we can recast our problem. So, actually, this HDA consists just to correct only the diagonal part. With this delta, delta contribution is, of course, an exchange integral, but only on the diagonal, you see? And, uh, actually, the calculations of uh, this uh, is... Um, already implemented in ADF at a numerical level. So uh, you can already use HDA in both CASIDA and Polti DDFT, but at numerical level. Actually, at the moment, we have another version which is already in the trunk, so it will be released uh, probably, at, I think, in the beginning of uh, 2023, where these uh, uh, calculations are done uh, new, uh, not numerically, but uh, uh, let me say using uh, the, another fitting technique, uh, uh, exploiting uh, that resolution of the identity. And uh, actually, this work has been done by Pierpaolo uh, when he spent uh, some time in SEM uh, this spring. Okay, and this was for HDA. So, uh, what about uh, the timing and uh, the uh, of uh, HDA and also the uh, accuracy with respect to the experiment? So, this is uh, a gold uh, 25 cluster with simplified ligands. You see, this is the experiment, and these are calculations at uh, different levels. You see, with the we have used uh, a rather small cluster. Uh, this proliant cluster uh, we use for this calculation 24 cores. You see, for Casida to go up to less than 4 EV. So here you need uh, we need the uh, sorry less than uh, about uh, 60 hours. But uh, if we do the same calculation with HDA, so with this simplify, we employed only nine hours and. Uh, with Polti DDFT, we have been able to go up to five electron volts, so to cover much more energy and energy interval uh, with 16 hours. So you see, and this was uh, done with uh, a numerical calculation of the correction. So I show you just another uh, application. If you go to larger cluster, so this was uh, 25, if you take goal 28, but with a more complicated uh, uh, aromatic ligand, we go of, uh, from uh, 100 to almost 300 atoms. So you see the numerical HDI will go to 84 hours, but uh, with this new version of the fitted HDA, we dropped to only three hours. So you see that now it is possible to calculate these clusters also with a very accurate scheme with hybrid functionals with, uh, uh, I mean, a very competitive uh, com computational effort. Okay, all this is possible because actually we have a optimized the, the Polti DDFT fitting basis set. All this work has been done during the PhD of uh, Marco Medves. And uh, actually, Marco has been able to optimize this uh, basis set for almost all the periodic table. Only uh, lanthanide and the actinides are not yet uh, optimized. He uh, used some descriptors uh, that we took from uh, uh, artificial intelligence for uh, these uh, descriptors of uh, resemblance from uh, a hypothetical 
calculation with the basis set with respect to standard. And of course, we took the casida as the standard uh, calculation. And uh, um, this uh, basis set is already included in the current version of uh, MS, but you can find also the paper which has been recently published in Journal of Computational Chemistry. So if you are interested in the details of the optimization of uh, this basis set. This is just uh, an example for the chlorine. You see, this was uh, uh, the calculation done with previous basis set, which has been uh, actually optimized by hand. And this is the comparison between Poiti DDFT and Casida with the optimized uh, basis set with the new. You see that we have almost perfect uh, match. This is an example of the behavior of these uh, um, uh, descriptors with respect uh, to the number of basis set. You see that uh, when you have many basis set, uh, the descriptors indicate that there is a very high accuracy. Then if we cut too many functions, we have uh, a decaying behavior. So our philosophy is to take uh, the best basis set before having this deterioration. And actually we use the two different descriptors in order to be safe. And also we optimize not in only one molecule, but uh, over a collection of molecules. This guarantees that uh, the basis set, which has been optimized on three molecules is actually, uh, can be applied also outside on the molecule outside the collection. In fact, you see that uh, we took other molecules and uh, it worked uh, uh, very nicely. Okay, this is uh, a, instead uh, an example of the application of the method on uh, a complicated clusters, which has been uh, synthesized and also registered at a very low temperature for our, uh, our colleague Flavio Maran in Padua. So we have this very good uh, experiment at low temperature. And this is uh, our quality DDFT calculation, which is, uh, you see, in very good agreement with respect to the experiment. So here we have uh, the same uh, graph uh, in electron volts uh, or in uh, nanometers. Okay, also this has been published and you see that our calculation is able to uh, describe uh, in practice all the features. There are some uh, disagreement regarding the intensity, but I think that uh, most uh, of uh, the features are very well uh, reproduced. Of course, we have many tools to describe uh, also the nature of the resonance that of course we don't have time, but uh, actually you can do by Polity DDFT also this uh, analysis. So other applications to very large systems are in the field of chiral nanoplasmonics. So these are chiral systems, very large metal clusters. And we have been able to calculate the absorption plasmons and also to see if there is some dichroism in these systems. And actually we have seen that uh, these linear uh, helix are not very, are very strong uh, in absorption, but the dichroism is, dichroism is rather low. And actually we have interpreted this uh, using these ICM plots, which uh, are also a very useful tools to describe the results uh, of uh, TDDFT calculation done by TDDFT, by Paul TDDFT. Here are the reference. We are actually discussing to implement uh, this uh, um, plot uh, also in the graphical user interface of uh, AMS, I hope, uh, for the next release. We are working on this. And instead, you see if you have uh, this kind of structures, then uh, the plasmon can be very intense also in the dichroism. You ob we observe this uh, behavior. And actually, it has been possible to rationalize uh, this behavior with simple models uh, of uh, circulating currents. Okay, this is just an example of a very big uh, system with more than uh, 1,000 uh, atoms that we are currently uh, working on in the collaboration with uh, uh, Stefano Corni, uh, Massimiliano Aschi, and Hanu Akinen in Vascula. And uh, <coughs> these are list of other application which have been done, for example, the calculation of moments between excited states, which is already 
implemented in IDF, chiral functionalization, uh, then this has been done. Also the inclusion of molecular dynamics uh, and effective uh, uh, essential dynamics for the conformational degrees of freedom, also for the solvent, the more efficient HDA with resolution of the identity in collaboration with uh, Luke Bisker in Amsterdam and uh, the work of Pierpaolo D'Antoni, and also the work of Elena Zarbato with uh, Constantin Neyman in Barcelona with uh, silver clusters. Okay, so now actually I have uh, completed uh, my review. Now I just want uh, to tell you some description about the input uh, that can be very useful if you are planning to do a PoTD DFTA calculation with uh, AMS. So this is just uh, a standard part of the input of AMS. Okay, here we have a, a start from a previous calculation. So here you have uh, the geometry. And uh, what is important here is that you must use the new basis set. So you have in the database this uh, polity DDFT. So use the polity DDFT basis set when you are, when if you plan to do a polity DDFT calculation. Actually, there is a check in the program. So if you don't use uh, this uh, basis set, uh, you should get an error message. Okay, then actually the block for Polity DDFT is quite easy. You have just a few rows. So let me explain the reason, the, sorry, the uh, meaning of these uh, numbers. So fre frequency range is just the range of the spectrum. For example, we want to calculate the spectrum from zero to 5 EV, which is a typical optical range. And frac are the number of points, how many points we want to calculate. Of course, they must be rather dense, otherwise you have uh, steps. So it is important to have a, a rather small step. Then the grid, what is the grid? The grid is just the range of uh, uh, energy over which we calculate the integrals uh, for different excitations. This is very important because as you know, in TDDFT, you have a mixing of excited configuration. So you must be sure to include in your calculation all the configuration that can mix at your energy. So for example, in this case, uh, what we are using with this cutoff with the cutoff of three electron volt, like in this, means that if I am calculate my spectrum at this energy, I will include also all the configurations which are up to three electron volt higher with respect omega. Then, of course, since we want to scan up to five EV, we must calculate the integrals up to eight. EV in order to cover all the cutoff. So you see, actually this uh, K grid depends on the spectrum and on the cutoff. The cutoff is very crucial because uh, you must check very carefully which uh, value to use in this. And uh, the cutoff usually in the default is for EV. This is usually very good for large systems for very big metal clusters. However, for smaller or medium systems, you must cut off the increase maybe up to 20 electron volts or even more. What I recommend, since this cutoff can be very important for the um, accuracy of your results, that you check the cutoff choice with respect a casita calculation of the lowest part of the spectrum. We have found that actually, uh, the cutoff is very important mainly for the lowest part of the spectrum. So maybe you can extract uh, only this part of the spectrum with the Casida calculation. You don't need so many excited states and uh, you check uh, this choice uh, with respect to Casida calculation. And this, uh, if, you, if this is uh, actually confirmed, then you can uh, go to higher energy. Then uh, just to go on with the discussion, discussion and grid is uh, how many intervals uh, we, ch we choose to divide this uh, 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 energy scale, which is up to eight EV in this case, just to 
include all the integrals that we need. And usually we take a step which is similar with the step uh, of the frequency. So in this case, uh, point, uh, uh, 0.25 uh, EV. And then the lifetime is the imaginary photon energy, which actually will give you the half width, uh, half maximum of the Lorentzian broadening. Okay, so these are the conclusions. So I, I will not repeat uh, uh, the point that I have already touched. So maybe what can be interesting for you are the further extensions. So in the next release, you will find the Poiti DDFT with the fast uh, HDA with the resolution of the identity. Actually, also the unrestricted HDA for the Casida approach. The, uh, and this is already in the trunk, actually. Now we are working. I, I hope that we will be able to insert uh, before the end of the year some restart option for the Poiti DDFT, which are very important if you go to supercomputers when you have, for example, 24 hours of wall time limit. And then also to include in the GUI the ICM plot that I show you before. Then of course we have other plans to go in the next year, for example, to extend Poiti DDFT for unrestricted calculations. And also, for example, range separated functionals with the resolution of the identity in Poiti DDFT. And of course, to improve parallelization, which is very important for uh, very large systems. Uh, I want to thank uh, many people here because, of course, uh, we did uh, many uh, in so many years. So uh, I would like to thank uh, our colleague here in Trieste, Giovanna Fronzoni, Daniele Toffoli, Emanuele Coccia, and uh, also our PhD uh, students, uh, um, Oscar, which actually left the group, but uh, also Marco Medves, Marta Monti, Pierpaolo D'Antoni, which actually did the ECCM master thesis, and Elena, Elena Zarbato. And uh, also, of course, uh, the friends in uh, Amsterdam group, Stan, uh, Eric, uh, Fedor. Our colleagues in Pisa, mainly Alessandro Fortunelli and Luca Sementa, we developed many things uh, together. The colleague in Aquila, Aquila, Massimiliano Aschi, in Padova, the group uh, of Flavio for Maran, for the experiments, Stefano Corni for the horse field, in Ivaskila, Hanu Akinen for the work on metal clusters, and also Thomas Burghi from uh, Lausanne uh, for the uh, photoabsorption uh, measurements uh, and uh, also uh, cycle, uh, circular dichron. So actually I have completed uh, in this way. So maybe we can uh, uh, now I have, uh, okay, if there are questions or if you like, uh, I can do a, a very quick demonstration of a Polti DDFT equation uh, using uh, for example, uh, the graphical user interface that uh, I have in my laptop. But uh, of course, if there are maybe some questions uh, regarding uh, the, um, the talk, uh, I can uh, reply now, or I don't know if there are questions, or if not, I can go with uh, some. Uh... Good, yes. Yeah, so, so I don't see any questions in the chat, but I will open up also the, the audio, but um, yeah, well, Thank you, first of all, for an excellent overview of all the all the methods, uh, and and um, yeah, um, faster and faster ways to study larger and larger clusters. I think it's very excellent work. Um, but yeah, maybe if you want to get started with uh, trying to do a live demonstration, which I know as no other can always be, uh, uh, yeah, exciting. So hope hopefully it goes well. In the meantime, I will allow. Uh, Okay. to um, to unmute if they wanted to ask questions please not all at the same time okay. but uh, can you see the GUI of ADF no so at the moment we don't see your screen ah sorry I have to
Yeah, now we can see the graphical user interface. So okay, so uh, that, so that let's have a very simple calculation on water. So I can take just uh, okay, and then uh, let's uh, do of course uh, a single point calculation. Then we can do, for example, a hybrid with B three lip. Uh, okay, we don't need the relativity for water, and the basic set is very important. Uh, you have to choose Polity DDFT here, and let's do a very good basic set triple Z, for example. Okay, so this is standard uh, ADF input. Then to go to the properties, here you find the Polity DDFT. Okay, let's calculate the spectrum. Then the frequency, so maybe we can go just from, uh, for example, 0 0.05 to maybe 10 electron volt. And uh, we can ask, for example, 200 points. Lifetime, we can do, for example, 0.15. Of course, these are very arbitrary. It depends on the, usually of the resolution of your experiment. Then uh, for the K grid, so let's uh, start with the cutoff. This is a very small system, so let's use a larger cutoff, uh, for example, 10 EV. So if you have a cutoff of 10 and the maximum spectrum is 10, let's use a grid up to 20. And then also here, let's, for example, use 400 intervals just to have uh, a rather accurate. Uh, uh, scheme. Okay, so now let's see if I am able to run the calculation because usually the graphical user interface with the zoom is a little bit uh, slow. So let me try. Okay. So, okay. So, oh. Okay. Okay, it started. Okay, so you see the CF is converged. Okay, it's finished, fine. So now we can go, we can, okay, let's go first to the output to have a look. Okay, so you see this is the standard output. So the relevant part of course is at the end. So, we have uh, many partial information, but uh, actually this is the last part, which is most interesting. So this is the energy, the points you see, and this is the absorption. So we plot this, for example. The CD spectrum, of course, is not interesting now because uh, uh, this is not a chiral system. And uh, so you see that uh, if you look, uh, we have a maximum here around seven EV. But uh, of course, uh, we actually can. Uh, oh, sorry, that. Uh, let me see. We can plot the spectrum. Spectra. Ah, okay. I think you, you need to uh, select the job, you see. Uh, so, so select the water job, put your, yeah, that's it. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. So you see, if you've been uh, working with ADF oh, okay. for such a long time, then the <laughs> graphical user interface is, uh, is a novelty. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's use, okay, this electron volt, so you see, you have two peaks here around seven and uh, around uh, nine uh, EV. And uh, if you like, you can do the same calculation, for example, with uh, the, uh, for example, we can take, uh, Okay, we can do with the Casida, for example. 
maybe only allowed, maybe 10 is too much, just five excitation for water. This is fine. And uh, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. No, I got an error. Uh, strange because actually I try, but uh, maybe let me. I have to cancel it. Yeah, maybe make a completely new input. Yes, yes. Yeah. Still asking for Paul TDDFT and uh, Casida TDDFT. Yes, so. Okay, so okay, so now we can do again the same. So let's do B3 lip. Okay, now if we are doing Casida, of course we can use a standard basis set. We don't need the polity DDFT at all. only allowed, so let's take only five. Okay, then. Okay. Okay. Okay, now it's running. Okay, you see excitations. Okay. Okay, so maybe we can go directly to the spectra. Okay. Okay, so now we have to fix a little bit the energy because we are on a different scale. So let's do as before from zero to 10. And okay, you see that uh, you obtain the same uh, seven and the nine roughly. So, okay, so of course this is, was uh, just a trivial example, but uh, maybe this is just an example that you can check your results uh, if you are not sure about your cutoff, for example, choice. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, that, that was... All from my side, so if there are questions or... Whatever. Yeah, so there, there's this question for, uh, for, uh, in the chat from uh, Mubashir. So is it possible to use Paul TDDFT for open shell systems? And so I mentioned you, I think you mentioned you have plans for that for 2024, right? For uh... actually, I mean, at the moment it is not yet implemented. So OTDFT can be used now only on closed shell systems. However, we know that this is a, a very important extension. So I think we will work on it next year. So I suppose that it will be ready during 23, maybe. Okay, so we're, we're looking forward to that and perhaps then indeed one may, well, may be able- Yeah, maybe it can be interesting that in the Casida method, the uh, HDA approximation has been implemented for open shell. Okay. I know Rick yeah. told me in a, in a mail, so it will be available from the next release uh, in January. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And then when it will be, of course, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't mention, but there's a follow-up part uh, to that question. So such as a crystal with a particular charged point defect, 
uh, perhaps in the band module. And uh, so I think the answer to that will be that you just need to define a cluster and run it with ADF, right? So there's there's no plans for having a periodic extension of uh, the pool TDDFT. No, at the moment, no. Uh, actually, I know that in band there is the TDDFT part, but I never thought to extend uh, the scheme. Maybe it could be, but uh, we don't plan at the moment. No. Yeah. Maybe if you use very large uh, mod, uh, cluster model, you can do also with finite uh, models, of course. Yeah, so, so indeed, I think that would be the advice to just yeah, make yes. a large supercell and then yes. try to make a good cluster. Sure. Uh, then there's, a, there's another question from uh, uh, Yosha. Thanks for the great talk and work. In which cases do the poll TDDFT results differ significantly from the Casida approach? Or are there cases where poll TDDFT is generally not suitable? Well, I mean, poll TDDFT uh, should give the same results uh, as Casida. So from the, uh, if I understood well, the the question, there is no different physics. It is just another way to solve the same equation. So the physics is just the same. The only difference is that uh, we have different uh, regime of application. Uh, usually, Casida is implemented with the Davidson uh, uh, diagonalization algorithm. And uh, we know that the uh, Davidson algorithm has been developed at the beginning for the CI calculation. So it means you have huge metrics but you are interested only on few excited states in the lowest part of the spectrum. So if you are interested in only one, the lowest excited states, go with Casida, I think. This is the best. However, for example, if you are interested in plasmonic or in the description of the optical absorption of uh, large metal clusters, and you want to cover, for example, 5 EV of typical optical range, you need uh, uh, many thousands of uh, lowest eigenvalue. And with the Casida approach, uh, uh, you know, it can be no more stable, no more convenient. It cannot uh, maybe converge or uh, uh, numerically unstable. So I think that uh, uh, Polity DFT is uh, more competitive uh, when you have uh, large systems and you need uh, many excited states. Yeah, that's 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 very clear to me. Um, so, Polity DFT always works, um, but it becomes competitive if you're dealing with larger systems and many excitations. Yes, of course, in Polity DFT, there are some approximation because you have seen we have to discretize the energy. Yeah. Uh, so you, you have the cutoff. Uh, so if you have small systems, you can do very well because you use very large cutoff and so on. But I mean, it is not convenient. If you have a small system, use Casida, of course. Yeah. The, this method is uh, just another way to solve the same equation, but uh, is more efficient on larger systems. That's clear. Let's see if there's any, any other questions from the, the audience here. I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, then, yeah, maybe I can ask a, a question myself. So related to the open shell extension, will that also mean it will be possible to do spin orbit coupling? Pull TDDFT, do you think, to do relativistic calculations? Uh, okay, uh, in principle, uh, yes, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, much more difficult. So uh, the extension to open shell, uh, non relativistic or just scalar relativistic, should be straightforward. Okay, you have a little bit of coding, but I don't see big difficulties. Uh, the extension to the spin orbit uh, actually is much more difficult because as you know, also for the Casida approach to have open shell with uh, spin orbit uh, is difficult. At the moment, you know, it is implemented only with the tandem of approximation. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it can be done, but uh, we have to think about it because uh, I think uh, 
it will be much more difficult uh, and uh, actually I don't know if it is uh, how to actually to to implement the spin orbit uh, in Polti DDFT. We may discuss, uh, but uh, it would be a more long time project, I think. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it will be a challenge. Yes, and consider that usually if you have big systems, uh, then uh, we have also try also application of uh, Hot excitation on metal clusters, usually the spin orbit is very important only on the lowest part of the spectrum when you have uh, individual lines. But when you have many lines and you convolute them, if, it, if you go with or without spin orbit, it is not so different. Actually, we have a paper on it. Uh, so probably spin orbit is very important on small systems, but on very big systems, I think uh, it's not so crucial. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, let's see. I don't see any any further questions. So so let me just yeah thank Mauro again for a really nice uh, yeah introduction and and uh, range of applications for which uh, people should be using Paul TDDFT. Um, you mentioned we can make your slides available as well. Uh, so yeah, that's that's. Uh, make sure that happens and if there's any questions and, and uh, comments or suggestions later on I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll be happy to take them good yes, yes. Uh, of course should there be some uh, uh, curiosity some comments you, can, you are free to send me an email or if you are interested in uh, other aspects uh, feel free to contact me and uh, okay we can discuss uh, Okay, I mean for all the audience. That, uh, yeah, great. Okay, well, thank you again. And um, a good weekend to you and everybody else. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.